I love Quantrix and I want to make you a Quantrix master. Go to QuantrixAuthority.com to learn more. Hey, welcome back to another netcast. I'm Rich Lopez, Quantrix Authority. I sincerely appreciate you joining me today for episode number 297, where I'm going to show you how to select between lower and upper bounds, but your select between is failing. So what can you do? I have here a very basic model where I have a, a, a column for lower bound and a column for upper bound, and I have some value that I want to look up between these two col columns and I want to return a corresponding value where this number is between the ranges listed here. Uh, you may be tempted to go ahead and try to solve this by using a select between. The problem is a select between is not built for this type of structure and this type of logic. If you were to try this you would more with a select between you would more than likely get a pound size error and that's just because this solution doesn't really fit with using the select between parameters. So what you would need to do is you would need to consider the other function in Quantrix, which really is probably the second best function in Quantrix. I think the number one function in Quantrix is select, and the number two uh, function in Quantrix is probably the sum product function. It is an awesome function. So what I would do here is I would simply say that selection is equal to sum product and I want to create kind of this criteria range and evaluate it whether or not it's true or false, this criteria. And the first criteria is, is this lower bound range, is it greater than or equal to this key value that I'm going to put in here? And I put that in uh, parentheses, that, are, that kind of conditional check. And then I'm going to multiply that. And I'm going to say, well, is this key value greater than or equal to upper bound here. And I may actually say, is it less than or equal to? I think that's going to actually work better for me. And I put that criteria again within parentheses. And then when those both those criteria are true, I want it to bring back my value here. So I'm simply going to hit comma and then highlight that item or that column. And what happens is you can see that if it was 1600, I would expect it to return 4.4, uh, not 3.1. So maybe I've got something a little bit wonky here. So I may do uh, uh, a less than here and see if that works for me. If I go and put 250 in here, does it work? It should bring back a 5. It does. What if I put 249? It should also bring back a 5. What if I put like 99? I would expect it to bring back 6. Is that correct? Correct. So how is this working? If I look at my dependency inspector, I can see what happens is some product goes out and he evaluates these criteria as trues and falses or as booleans and ones and zeros. And I can see that the first, in this first array of lower bound, that the first three items or the first two items are less than 99. So it goes ahead and gives me ones for those, and where they are not less than, it gives me zeros. I then multiply that by my next range of criteria, which is, is 99 less than or equal to my upper bound, and it gives me the zeros and the ones where that is true or false. And then if I were to multiply both those ranges, I get where the second uh, set which is row 2, is equal to 1, where it's true, where uh, the criteria evaluates the true here, again, following my tooltips within my dependency inspector. And then what I do is I, cor I return the corresponding value that I want to return. And in this case, it would be 6. So my sum product would yield me 6, and that is what is showing here. So that is the sum product function. That is how I would, you know, select between two lower and upper bounds and have it return a corresponding value where it falls between the two. Again, select between is not how you would want to do that. You would want to use some product. It's an awesome function, and this is how you use it. If I had more criteria, I could certainly add it simply by multiplying uh, another criteria set as I've done on the first two. 
So if you have any questions about some product or anything in regards to Quantrix, I really do hope that you'll reach out to me at QuantrixAuthority at gmail.com. I absolutely love Quantrix and I want to make you a Quantrix master. So please join me again for another episode of Quantrix Authority with Rich Lopez. Today's podcast is brought to you by QuantrixAuthority.com. I love Quantrix and I want to make you a Quantrix master.